I cannot believe what I've just done. I've just, <laughs> I've just signed a lease. This place is mine. It has been such a big week for me. I got back to Beijing about a week ago after finishing off this filming project. And while I was away, I was reminded of a dream I've always had, which is to live in a Beijing hutong. So hutongs are the lanes between traditional residential compounds called suhuyai. Many of these hutongs were actually laid out hundreds of years ago. So walking through the maze-like networks of hutongs is a great way to feel like you've been transported to the past and get a glimpse of the old Beijing because this here really is old Beijing. You never really know what to expect when it comes to hutongs. It's all, you know, all a bit unpredictable, but you're always finding something new. These days, the hutongs are a super trendy place to hang out where you can find lots of cute hidden cafes, rooftop bars, fine dining restaurants and quirky boutiques. I wanted to show you this place. It is so cool. I was recommended it a couple of days ago and I checked it out. It is so unexpected. So this is it here. It's called Old World. Now this is the quirkiness I signed up for. This is like a vintage toy cafe here in the middle of the hutongs. It's just opened. I think it's about a month old. This cafe is a vintage toy cafe cafe as soon as you enter, you've got this wall of dolls behind you here. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, in short, hutongs are my favorite place to be in Beijing. And once I made the decision to actually make the move, everything started happening very quickly. This is how I did it. So to start looking for places, I joined one of the many apartment rental WeChat groups that are here. In this group, these agents post some information about hutong houses specifically that are available for rent in Beijing. And they usually post, you know, a couple of photos. They let you know what the price is and how many bedrooms and where it's located, all that info. And then if you're interested, you can go check it out, which is what I did. I went the next day to visit like four places, two of which were in my budget, two of which were outside of my budget. My budget was 6,500 renminbi a month which for reference is about a thousand American dollars a month or 1,400 Australian dollars a month which is cheapish for Beijing especially within the second ring road but really expensive compared to other cities in China I have friends living in other cities um, excluding Shanghai of course Shanghai is also really expensive but they're paying nowhere near that much for an apartment so the first two places I went to see both around 6,500 a month were just a little too small like I wanted somewhere small and I'm cool with the idea of living in a tiny house type situation but one of my must-haves is a desk, a place to work comfortably and edit, make my videos. And neither of the places I saw within my budget had that. They didn't even have room for a dining room table. I would have to eat on the couch if I wanted to live there. So I was, yeah, not interested in that. And then he took me to see something that was out of my budget, a place for, I think, 7,200 renminbi. This one here is a little bit out of my price range, but it is quite nice and open. It's a good size, much bigger than the other ones I've seen but still too much. Then he took me to see the last place of the day, which was perfect, absolutely perfect. I'd actually seen that place in the WeChat groups and it looks beautiful, but way outside my budget, listed at 7,800 renminbi. But he actually told me that because it's before Chinese New Year and there aren't many people looking to rent right now, they ended up bringing it down to my budget, 6,500 renminbi. Long story short, I signed the lease the next day. Oh my goodness, I am so excited right now. Gonna close my door. This is the bottom level here. And then I'll take you upstairs. Got a little sitting thing here. And the bed right now is here. And we have this beautiful skylight. You can see some rooms. Oh, this is so cool. And moving was actually an experience in itself. I can't believe how much stuff I've accumulated in the six or so months that I've been here in Beijing. Hard to believe I actually moved here with just a suitcase and now I've got multiple boxes and even pieces of furniture to move out of my place. So I ended up hiring someone to help me move. Moving day. 
I've got someone who's here to help me move my stuff. <laughs> Bless him. I didn't realize I had accumulated so much stuff. And Saul, I'm sorry. I'm so sad. I know. I'm so sad to see her go. Me too. I'm sad to go too, but this is an exciting thing. Yep. Gonna try living alone. Like, you have to come yeah. visit me. Of course I will. Any issues, any troubles, yeah. you know, I'm just on the other end have of the road. We have to go get Heidi Lau together. Definitely. And on moving day, which was, what, three days ago now, it was fully snowing. Like, you can still see little bits of remnants of snow on cars and in corners here, but yeah, fully snowing down. And I know they say that moving in the rain is a sign of good luck, so I don't know, what does that mean with snow? Extra good luck? I hope so. And then for the step I was most excited for, unpacking and making it really feel like a home, feel like my place, which actually came together super quickly thanks to all the furniture that came with the apartment that I was able to rent from the agency for no extra cost, which was awesome. So I'm really keen to show it to you, even though it's still kind of coming together, it's a bit rough around the edges, but I'm impatient and I want to show you guys my tiny hutong house. So welcome to my home. Oh, I've met my neighbors, by the way, and they're all so nice and so welcoming. They're like, if you need anything at any time of day, just let us know and we'll be, we'll be there to help. So this is it. Oh, look how cozy and inviting this looks. For me, the first thing that hits me when I walk inside is just how warm it is, both physically and also emotionally. I feel like it's a very warm, vibe in here, but it's also physically quite warm and that's because it does have heating and it is heated through the floors and I can control that underfloor heating through this little doodad right here. I can turn it down or up or even off if I wanted to. And because the floors are heated, this is the best place to be in the apartment on this mat. It gets so wonderfully warm and cozy. And I pretty much spent all of my spare time in this little bean bag here, just soaking up all that warm, floor goodness. Then from the mat to this side of the apartment where I have my dining room table, also provided by the agency, my funky stone rubbing here. There's a fun story behind this actually. This is my pride and joy. This is a stone rubbing from Shuzhou, which is in northern Jiangsu province. So it's a stone rubbing of the original stone inscription and the inscription is over 2000 years old and it actually depicts the first ever recorded depiction of Chinese barbecue, Chinese shao kao, which you can see right here. He's grilling his meat on his sticks and it's because of this that they call Shuzhou the hometown of Chinese barbecue, something they're very very proud of and yeah when I saw that they had a stone rubbing from the actual stone inscription which I went and visited I had to have it Paid a bit of money for it, but totally worth it. This is my kitchen here. It's small, but it's got everything that I would need. So I've got an electric stove over here that works quite well. This is a gift from my good friends, Jack and Nico, who are actually my neighbors. <laughs> Here's my Bialetti here, coffee maker that I've been enjoying, you know, making myself a coffee in the morning. And this washing machine is also brand spanking new, as well as everything in the bathroom. I was the first one to christen the toilet. Speaking of toilets, this here is my bathroom. Pretty standard, got a shower here, some little space for my things. This here is my mirror, super cheap. I got it from Taobao and it was actually delivered just today. And under the stairs here, I've got my full size fridge, nice and big, nothing inside just yet. And under the stairs here, I also have some more storage. Um, some of you may be like, what the hell is that? It's actually another one of my pride and joys. I got it recently when I was in Shanghai doing my project. I was hosting a documentary. And one of the things we were including in this documentary was a interview with a local, quite a famous artist in Shanghai called Ma Liang. I don't know, some of you may know who he is. Very quirky, very passionate about his art. And the project he's working on at the moment is very quirky, basically taking bits and pieces of random plastic things and sticking them together and making this cool, diorama like artwork and as a part of it we made this together so I chose the abalone head and he chose the dinosaur body and it is actually signed by both him and myself so yeah gonna keep that there <laughs> show you upstairs so I'm super proud of how I've arranged this upstairs area. It's a little bit different to what it was like when I first moved in. Originally the bed was here, but I've actually put the bed over here, which is a really great decision because it allows me to put my desk here. It's such a comfortable working environment. 
I've got lots of space. It's got all this lovely natural light from the skylight here. You'll notice that my desk here, it's not a very pretty desk. So it's actually just one of those super cheap fold out tables that I got for Christmas. Well, I wasn't given it for Christmas. I bought it for Christmas because we didn't have enough dining room table seating for all of the guests. So I bought an extra one and it's come in handy as my temporary desk situation. I'll probably get you know, a bit nicer one at some point, but for now it does the job and, you know, it's a really nice little working environment over there to do my editing. Got my air purifier here, one of those Beijing essentials. And my oh my, how I do love these gorgeous wooden beams, part of the original Hutong house. And even though this place is very newly renovated and freshly painted, these wooden beams really make it feel like a Beijing hutong and it's so vibey and gorgeous and oh it's just absolutely perfect I love it so much but there are a couple of you know cons lots of pros but a couple of cons first is the bathroom is a little bit smelly um, and I've heard that is a hutong thing that's very common because of the old older plumbing system but I heard that there are some things that you can get for the drainage that will lessen that problem so I've yeah gonna sort that out <laughs> and the second con is that I actually don't have a number on my hutong house so it's kind of hard to get any food delivered so takeaway food becomes somewhat difficult bless him he's been traversing all over the hutong to find me First time trying out my local Jim Bing place. Let's see what they got. Mm. I think I'll have to keep looking. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna find the right one on your first try. I'll try a different one tomorrow. So yeah, this is my Hutong house. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. While you're here, please subscribe, would mean the absolute world to me. And I'll see you next week for a very exciting video. I'm starting to post my Sichuan content, episode one, pandas. <gasps> you're not gonna wanna miss it. I'll see you then, bye.